Hello! <laughs> As a bit of an awkward start there, where my computer decided to do something that I hadn't intended it to. Uh, hello and welcome to the live cast. Um, thanks for joining us this week. If you're a regular watcher, it's good to have you with us. If you're tuning in for the first time, uh, welcome to you. Good to have you. Um, you notice again we're in another location. These live casts are coming from more and more exotic locations every week. So we've had my back garden, we've had my dining room, and now we've got my living room. So by the end of this seven or so weeks, we'll have done every room in the house. Join me next week from the bathroom. Um, we'll <laughs> see how that goes. I've not told Dave yet we're going to be in the bathroom. My next interviewee, um, we won't really be in the bathroom, so don't worry about that. Um, as you've probably seen, we're doing some interviews, and maybe you've seen on uh, on the blurb for this and over the few, uh, last couple of days that I'm going to be speaking to Barney. So I've got Barney here with me today. Barney, hello. Hello. I say Barney, although on all the info I've called you Ian Barnard. Uh, so <laughs> might be strange for you to say that. Though. It, yeah, <laughs> it's very strange for me to say that. So uh, yeah, so this is Barney. Um, Barney, welcome. Uh, your name isn't really Barney, though, is it? It's... No, no, no. So my, my name's Ian Barnard. It's just that uh, my surname overshadows my first name. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't actually think of you as an Ian. It's, it's just... I, I don't know anyone that calls you Ian apart from your mum. <laughs> when I'm in trouble. When you... <laughs> so I think I've said to you before about would taking your... Uh, yeah, I was on the church minibus driving it around to pick up some old ladies and your mum was giving me directions where to go. And she just said out of nowhere, um, have you seen Ian recently? And I was just like, who's Ian? Ian? <laughs> and I was like, oh, Barney. So, right, yeah. <laughs> I think it came around. I only got it when I first started going to to church as a teenager. Yeah. And it was just like, um, you know, Ian was such a, uh, you know, compared to the Barnard, it was just couldn't com- compete. It's... <laughs> <laughs> even even your even your wife calls you Barney. So, I know. So they, that shows how pervasive. She looked confused at the wedding. So. <laughs> Take Ian. Who's Ian? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, Barney. That's what we're going to go with. We okay, keep rolling fine, with Barney. Fine. So um, I, the thing is, actually, what I get is uh, when I get some of the people from other countries where uh, they have their names turned around. Oh yeah, yeah. So I often get hello Barnard. <laughs> <laughs> so um oh dear right so yeah so now you know that if i'm calling barney barney i, I can't even call you ian i just uh, call you ian barney um so barney and i uh, we know each other through church um because we've been at the same church for a good while now and we're on the team together at our cafe church thirsty yeah um and we'll probably chat a little bit more about that later and what that is um most of the time, most of our communication with each other occurs through puns and memes via Facebook, doesn't it? You know? It does. It does indeed. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have. I don't know why we have such a love for puns. Uh, well, I think it's because it's 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 in us naturally, <laughs> and it, as it is, because we're made in the image of God. Um, Jesus, because Jesus uses lots of puns, plays on words, doesn't he? It'll like, give, give us an example. Well, so he talks about the wind. You know, the wind blows where it wants, but no one knows where it goes in John 3 when he's talking to Nicodemus. But wind and spirit are the same words. Oh, okay. And in the same passage, I think it is, you got you must be born again. And born again um, could also mean, or sorry, again could also mean from above. Yeah. So, you know, again from above. So he's always doing, so I think biblical warrant for, um, for puns <laughs> for there. A pun. That's a good, yeah. So if anyone ever says to you like, oh man, all those puns you keep sharing, they're so awful. Yeah. Say, so, well, it was good enough for Jesus, so yeah. But he it. obviously he had a perfect pun. <laughs> we can, yeah, we can never match up. I'm not to claiming it. that our puns are on the level of of, uh, of Jesus, but uh, but definitely. And also, I mean, sarcasm. Paul uses sarcasm. Yeah. In in Corinthians, so again, I think biblical warrant for a bit of sarcasm. Is that puns. why you're called Paul? Yeah. <laughs> this is the most biblical forms of humour: puns yeah. and sarcasm. Absolutely, um, and. Some of you, uh, so the other thing that Barney and I have uh, that links us is that Barney and I are often mistaken for the same person. 
<laughs> I, the thing is, it's hard to say whether we look alike or not. It's just that people have confused us for some reason. But yeah, and well, on more than one occasion. So um, I, so so t- the t- there are two. Well, there's one main occasion that comes to mind. So we had a church meeting a long time ago. I think it was an APCM when we were considering a church plant. Yeah, yeah. And um, and it was very, you know, it was very hard to know whether it was going to happen or not. And I got up and said something at the front about how like we should do it. And you don't, I, you don't like to um, show your feelings. No, <laughs> I, I didn't mince my words. I th- and I, I think I said basically there was a danger of us stagnating and we needed a kick up the bum, I think was my exact phrase. Um, and um, one lady took great exception to this. She was mm. very angry about what I'd said. So um, afterwards she sought out Barney and gave him a piece of her mind because she thought Barney was me. Um, and because I'm the opposite to you, and I'm not great with confrontation, <laughs> I just like okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it happened at least twice, didn't it? That another time you, um, you, uh, I think it was was it the same lady? I don't know. <laughs> so I, I offended. We someone. might have based this all on just one person. It may be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but then also because even our children have mistaken. Oh yeah, us. I came into your kitchen <laughs> to go get a drink, and your daughter goes, "Daddy." <laughs> So yeah, it's um, yeah. We if if you're watching this and thinking why they're just two of the same person sitting in the seats there, um, you you're not the first. Um, and so Barn, um, and you've got a bit of a tendency to have embarrassing things happen to you. Yes. Tell us a bit about your driving test. So um, yeah, so my my first driving test, which obviously from that comment means I didn't <laughs> pass it. <for> <laughs> Um, what went wrong, Mark? What went wrong? Um, so, uh, I I did the whole test. I'd driven around with the um, invigilator, or what are they called, test examiner, and I passed it even when I got back to the test centre. Right. And I and and this is answering all the questions that they 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 gave you as well. And I got into car park. I'd still passed. Yeah. And then I crashed into the test centre. <laughs> <laughs> and the and the and the examiner just said. Didn't want to do that, did you? And he goes, ah, I'm going to have to fail you now. Oh, man. And it, and it was just, you know when so, a situation is just like, like that, it's just so bad that you have to laugh because like, yeah. it's just can't. <laughs> it's just too big to really comprehend. Yeah. Was it a, was it a high speed crash? Uh, uh, did no. you, was it that kind of foot on the accelerator at the last moment? Oh, I don't know. Was, I just, I don't know if it was nerves kicking in. Yeah. Because, you know, like you shake and I just didn't put the uh, foot on the brake hard enough for now. I, so, I could have just literally just stool like stalled in the middle of the car park or just stopped in the middle of the still car park. Passed. I, I went into a space and crashed into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. But you know, obviously you went back and you, you did you completed it in the end, so it was all good. Yeah, yeah. So, the same, I learned from my mistakes. <laughs> so, um we're going to chat a bit about your work in a, in a while because you're a you're a graphic designer. Is that is that the title you go by? Um I suppose less say now, more of Letterer, hand letterer. letterer um, okay. Because I, all I do is based around letters now. I used to be graphic design, so I do uh, a lot of everything, whether that's websites or magazines or brochures, yeah. business cards, logos, all that sort of thing. But now I just do custom lettering. Bit more niche now. Bit more niche. Yeah. Niche, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll 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 come back and talk about that in a bit. Uh, but uh, you you are a Christian, which is a, a good thing. For yeah. Us on, We're in the right place. place. Yeah. You come to the right place. <laughs> Um, so tell us a bit about that then. Like, have you always been a Christian? How has that kind of come about? Uh, so I haven't always been a Christian, but um, I sort of went to church annually, maybe for Christmas, maybe Easter, um, or the odd funeral or um, wedding, church wedding. Um, but uh, what, my and the reason why I started going to church was because my best friend invited me along when I was about fifteen. Mm-hmm. And it, with the enticing lines of, uh, you can skateboard around the halls and there's pretty girls. And so <laughs> for a teenage boy, that's like, that's like, like a win-win. win-win. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think you're the first Christian man who is enticed into uh, Christian events Yeah. by that. I, w- I was definitely invited to a, a camp a long time ago by, <laughs> by someone. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, and so I went along, and yeah, true to his word, I could just go around around the halls, and uh, it was really big youth group at that, so there was lots of people there. Um, and 
for me, I really enjoyed the social aspect of having that. It was on a Sunday night and just having the, you know, making new friends and it was just the highlight of my week going mm. along for the social aspect of the of the youth group. And But while I was going over that sort of year, first year there, I was just absorbing all the sort of teaching and um, the stuff I was learning from, from the Bible through the speakers, through just reading it myself. And um, uh, that like, end of that year, I went to a camp and, and sort of like committed my uh, life to Christ. I, I, and, I felt, uh, and I felt there was something missing, or you know, subconsciously felt there was something missing until that point. And then mm. I, you know, felt f- fulfilled and sort of completish as you can as a teenager. Yeah. You're still finding yourself. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, it wasn't always plain sailing because that uh, youth group, uh, uh, a big portion of it, sort of uh, jumped away and were enticed by sort of um, drink and drugs. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the pub became more popular, and. I had to make a choice between following what they were doing uh, and and keeping those friendships or just losing those friendships and starting with new ones mm. that would not take my life in that direction. And it was really hard for me to do because when I was younger, friends was just really something I was very insecure whether people liked me, you know, that sort of insecurity things. And, yeah. and so it was really hard for me to make that decision, but I'm glad I did because I didn't really want to go down that uh, avenue. I did do rebellious stuff as a teenager, but having made that decision and making some new friends and that friendship would be much smaller, um, it really did help me to sort of stay um, close-ish to God. But obviously things happen and you're always drawn back to different things. Um, yeah, so that's yeah. sort of the, you know where my journey sort of started. Um, and yeah, then through that I sort of led into leading the youth group uh, helping to lead the youth youth group uh, for quite a few years so when you were a little bit older a little bit older because I didn't I didn't go off to university I went off to college but it was a local one yeah so I didn't have to yeah I didn't stay away Um, I was so did you in some ways not face you know when people kind of go off to college or university whatever there's often that kind of oh it's really hard being a Christian was there still that element or even though you were still kind of at home Um, or or less of that I suppose there's less of that because you've got that consistency of you know because you sort of nobody knows you sort of thing when you go to university and nobody knows your background stuff like that and you sort of sometimes can just go completely off the rails there's like a lack of accountability yeah and it, and it and so yeah I suppose in some ways it was easier in some ways you get stuck in a routine and sometimes you don't grow um, um, by by at that similar sort of point that's when I met my now wife uh, Lindsay um, but she went to university quite far away sort of the other side of the country yeah um, about sort of um, a, a yeah I, I live in the southeast and she got went to university in the southwest so i got to experience i went to visit her regularly at weekends and so i got to experience that side of it bit of how, uni life yeah and um how if you don't get into the right church and there's not that support network i know my wife struggled with that while she was at university and so had to when she came back that's when her faith sort of grew a lot more because um there was a bigger support network there than there was uh, when she was in university so yeah, so I think yeah, it's a bit swings and roundabouts. Yeah, um, and and I've not prepped you on this, and you might okay. not even remember, but I years ago you I think it was you were giving a testimony, your testimony at thirsty, um, thirsty being our cafe, being our cafe church, which we'll, we'll talk about a bit more, um, and and you used a phrase which it, it, it obviously needs a bit of context, but <laughs> you said you're not going to get me in trouble, but. <laughs> <I say. laughs> um, you said something like, you know, I became a Christian and Jesus really messed up my life. Like, and, and actually, I, I thought it was a really helpful thing because what I think what you meant, you might not remember it because um, I think maybe I've asked you about it uh, other times. But it was that like when you become a Christian and, and I think maybe in reference to some of that stuff like the youth group and people going different ways, you know, actually following Jesus it is it, in in many ways. We say, yeah, it sorts us out and stuff. But following Jesus is hard, mm. and there are all these hard decisions, and 
you know, you know, even now as Christians, I suppose many of us could say as Christians, if we didn't, it would be much easier not to follow Jesus. Yeah. You know, like the road is narrow want, and yeah. the road is wide. It'd be much easier to go and walk the wide yeah. path. Um, but I just thought it was really refreshing to hear someone say, you know, I became a Christian and it wasn't like everything suddenly was all swings and, ra- you know, all yeah. roses, swings and ra- I, that's roses. <laughs> Because <laughs> what, uh, what, you know, as a Christian, you, I suppose you're trying to live a holy life, which is which is hard because there's so many things that stop you doing that. Um, but if you don't want to, then it's yeah, like I say, it's really easy. Mm. So I think it's a decision you make that's not an easy one. Yeah. So um, and uh, yeah, for me, it was. I suppose as soon as I became Christian, it was like just all these all these sort of barriers not barriers all these um, sort of different trials came up you know decisions that I make and uh, and actually we did um, in uh, yeah in the church we did we did a, um, a series where we looked at the Ten Commandments and um, you know it's something that a lot, yeah, you know even people that don't go to church know of but when we actually put them into a practical sense, how does that look like? And one of them really stood out for me was um, the do not steal. And I was like, oh, I don't steal. I don't yeah. steal cars or, you know, break into someone's house. But You just it, drive them into walls. Yeah, I just <laughs> <laughs> It was a cash point, right? Next to it. <laughs> um, uh, I forgot what I said. <laughs> uh, the, Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Don't steal. Don't steal. And, and actually, it was actually, it's the small things. It's like, um, uh, you know, I was in uh, uh, at work, and it's all about you know um, uh, saying, "Oh, I need a pen." And like, I'll just take one. You know, I need you know pen for home. I want to just take one out of the store cupboard. Yeah. You know, no one knows to say you know a mm. pen. And it, it really affected me, especially when it was a time around people were like copying music and just like putting like downloading it off the internet and putting it on CD. Yeah. Or someone would copy it for you, and they go, oh, "Well." The music companies make a lot, you know, enough money already. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter. You know, what's it? You know, here, it's the same with the movie companies. And I was like, oh, and actually, just saying, no, 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 I'm, I'll, I'll get my own copy, was massive in terms of the conversation with someone. They're like, they, you know, they're really taken aback about yeah. you. And it was through those sort of small things that actually, uh, really, yeah, you th- you think it's a bigger life decisions, but it's actually quite a lot of those little little. What you think throwaway things like integrity actually. and yeah. even the, what seems like small thing pe- you know that the majority of us as Christians are not going to be going around you know, murdering and stabbing yeah, yeah. you know all those kind of or, or obviously shoplifting <laughs> yeah. um, but there are those examples I think, and we, I think we'll talk a bit later about in the workplace integrity and, and mm. this stuff like that isn't it I mean yeah, the, the music thing is a big one actually because I think I remember at university like we we all had our you know, everyone had a, a laptop or whatever, mm. and everyone in in the first year on who was on campus, if you had your iTunes open, you could have this. Um, there was a little program that allowed you to see everyone else's iTunes. Okay. Like not just a few people, like everybody. Yeah. And you could just double click the tracks, and take and, and be like, oh great, yeah, I'll, I'll listen to that, listen to that, and yeah. and it would download it as well. And I remember just being really convicted, like. You know, at the time, I didn't think anything of it. But a few years later, being really convicted of like, actually, no, this isn't. That's not right. Yeah. And like, going through my music and deleting about two thousand tracks. You know, <laughs> yeah. of stuff. You and know. the thing is, you don't like in the time. I like, yeah, I had Napster, which was you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Download, yeah. And I was like, this is well, fine. You know, they, you know, they won't matter. That I'm downloading a few, and it's like, yeah. And I was just like. I had hundreds of copy CDs, and I was just like, "I'm gonna to have to get rid of all this." Yeah, and it and you know now it's different because you know a lot of the time just stream streaming music is and different. You, know, you you either pay or like Spotify's free. Yeah. Like that, Who but... owns music now? I know. <laughs> what I know. So <laughs> that sort of this that decision is is less of a and you know mu- and like same with movies. You know, actually, mm. just having physical things is just actually a bit more of a hassle now. Yeah, so I hate physical you know, content, uh, no, yeah. physical media. Just you. Know, so now it's, I suppose, less of an issue. But back then, it was just, it was, it was a really big, big thing, mm. and it really sparked off a lot of conversations with people, yeah. which was actually really helpful. Hard, but helpful. Um, yeah. So. Well, let, let's let's talk a bit about your work. Yeah, because obviously you're doing what you do now, kind of lettering, and we'll come to that. But 
tell us a bit about what you did before that. Get, and I spoke to you the other day. You said you always had this kind of goal to work for a Christian organisation. Yeah. So, um, so I left. I left college and got a job um, at a design and printers. Um, I was literally like the sort of T boy. I started as a T boy in terms of design, where I'd be just doing um, typesetting. So I'd have a program, a black and white program for a, a school, all the sporting fixtures, sporting fixtures for the school. I'd just have to update the dates and stuff like that. So it was yeah. quite, you know, it felt quite mundane at the entry time. level. Kind but of. I was like, you know, it's quite hard sometimes to go straight out of of college, university, and get a job. And I thought brilliant this is you know my first job uh that it was a design agency i could see you know i could progress progress um and i did and when there was downtimes i would teach myself so i taught myself how to do web design taught myself how to uh, use any you know particular programs get certain effects and stuff like that so um it was really and i say the seven years made some really good relationships that you know i've um really firm friends from that that place and then really good knowledge having a printers underneath where the design studio so i knew the process of um how it went from the digital form to the physical form um but then i uh, yeah i had a had a mission to really want to work for a christian organization with my design work and, uh, and that came along i got to work um applied for a job a part-time job at christianity and youth work magazine um as the lead designer of the Christianity magazine. And is that based here? Uh, well, part part of it is based in Crowborough. Yeah. Uh, which is the... Uh, it was changed now, but it was the subscriptions for the magazine. Right, okay. Um, and, yeah, just... I was the main designer of the magazine that was there. But there was a London office where mm. they also have a radio station, so the studios were up there and uh, a ton more people who were doing the... You know, raising money the radio presenters, mm -hmm. the people writing articles. Yeah. Um, uh, and they also had like a, a lifeline thing for people who, you know, that was open all the time, they could phone up and so on. So, and I got to go up there, you know, a couple of times a month, once or twice a month. And uh, and it was three days a week, which was perfect because um, it meant that I could do two days of freelance, start doing a sort of bit of my freelance work. And I, I, I got a year. So I did three days for them. I got a, um, a day where I was working for a couple of ladies who were, designers who are designers at my church and they took me on for a year which was really handy to see how they worked because just being a smaller um, design outfit um, and then I had one day where I was filling it out with sort of trying to get work from other clients yeah um, and I stayed there for seven years um, and and that enabled me to build up a, a few companies that could help um, when I wanted to go freelance I wasn't jumping from no days to five days yeah i'd already had already two days it was going it from slightly there two days to five days and and yeah so <laughs> and, and this is where it's sort of you know i made the decision yeah i'm gonna go free freelance but it just so happened that the day i went freelance was the day that my son was born i already had a daughter uh my daughter evie she was um three years older than my son Zach he was born on the day my last day of work so <laughs> what ha happened on that day was like we woke up my wife said uh, I'm having contractions let's get ready um, uh, they subdued for a bit um, she said well go off to work because I only work in like just five minutes corner, yeah it? just around yep. the corner she goes go to work I'll phone you if if, if, if um, I need you and so I did the whole day's work got the magazine finished sent to the printers literally five o'clock she found me back up to the hospital <laughs> <laughs> and two hours literally two hours later he was born yeah so uh yeah so it was it was you know if i'd moved house i could have done them the three most stressful things <laughs> moving job that's the combo having a baby and moving <laughs> so and but that was a really turning point what not just for the fact that i was went off and did freelance work mm. I, d I don't know why I choose there's never a, if you want to go freelance there's never a right time yeah, and having yeah. two children one that's just been born yeah. so my wife is off on maternity leave and then you decide to jump onto the freelance <laughs> <laughs> I could have chosen better times but yeah yeah well, I, it seems to have worked out yeah, right yeah and I think like, I, I gave myself like a buffer of three months worth of pay I'd saved up over that like seven years so that if I had no work 
we could be covered and I wasn't like stressing out trying to yeah you know us trying to look after the baby and stuff like that um and so but what came out of that also was and the reason why I'm now doing what I'm doing with the lettering yep. is because uh it's, my, it's Downton Abbey it's it? Downton Abbey Downton Abbey it's, is it's the down to Downton calligraphy. Abbey so Downton Abbey, which is the period drama set um, in... I don't even know anything about it. Is it the 20s? It's something like that. Uh, I think it moves every year, doesn't it? Probably. That's finished now, isn't it? Uh, I, don't, I, can't I don't know remember. if it's all finished. I can't remember. But, but I know, there's, if you've I know not there's, seen it, they all die. I know there's a lot of fans <laughs> in the UK and also in like America and other countries as well. Um, but I'm just not a period drama fan. My wife is, and that was her viewing choice. So in the evenings when she fed my son... Uh, she would have half an hour, 45 minutes. And that was her, her program that she would watch um, uh, every night. And um, yeah, last time when it was with my daughter, it was a friend series. And so I kept popping in and that because I like that. Um, but this time I was like, okay, I'm not interested in that. What am I going to do with my time? I didn't want to go back on the computer because I was on it all day. So for, for some reason, I chose to do click feet because it had letters in it and I sometimes typed some letters on the computer. <laughs> it was like a vague, you know, connection. And so I got, you know, like everyone does, they just go on Google and go, I want to learn click feet. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing to come up was uh, the dummies guy. Uh, you click fee for dummies yeah which was probably you know about right on my level I think. <laughs> and i can so say i ordered that off amazon got the recommending pens it was only like it cost me like 10 pounds to start yeah you know pens and a bit of paper and i got obsessed with it i literally did it every night for like half an hour an hour and even if we'd gone out for the evening we'd come back and i'd have to do whatever letter i was practicing yeah quite a bit of that obsessive um and I, I sort of kept that up for about six months, just constantly writing letters. I, I absolutely loved it because it was really old school. So dipping a pen in some ink and then drawing a letter, dipping. I tell you, you have to have quite a lot of patience for it. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, I just really loved it because you know, I was as I was going, people would look over my shoulder if they were rounds and just, you know, oh, I wish I could write like that. Yeah. And it's yeah. just. And it's a, you know, when you have a craft, whether it's sewing, whether it's painting, you know, any of these, you know, it's it's just very rewarding to be able to do something uh, and, um, you know, create. For me, you know, clearly means beautiful writing. Yeah. So it, was, it was great because I've never, because just designing stuff on the computer, I, I was like never felt that as a sort of a piece of art. Yeah. Whereas now I was doing something off the, you know, with some tools and stuff like that, and creating stuff, and it was really, just really, really enjoying it. And we've, yeah, and you, we, we've got some examples. Hopefully, people still hear us while this all goes on. So here we are. We've got uh, this one here, this kind of lighthouse image. Let your light shine before others. So kind of nice biblical. Yeah, yeah. Thing. And this, so this is well, there's this us on an iPad. So you're drawing on the iPad. Yeah. So I well. started off really old school, um, and I. I still sometimes do that, um, but I'm quite messy, so <laughs> uh, I, I have to have quite a lot of spillages. Um, so, sort of pre pre iPads and the Apple Pencil, that um, I would um, to give context to my posts. So I started. I needed a way to see that I was getting better because because I was because your progress is so uh there's really it's hard to see the progress mm. unless you look back and so i used instagram to um catalog my progress yeah so i could see that i was actually getting better even though it's small i was getting better um but what happens with me doing that was that people really enjoyed seeing the pictures but mainly like videos of me writing mm. and and it became a bit like all these other videos where it's satisfying to watch. And and we've got a video actually, one of your videos. Um, I don't know if this is your most popular video. It's certainly the one I hear a lot of people talk about the most. Oh, yeah. um, so here's a video Barney did. I mean, you talked about dipping a pen in ink. Yeah. Uh, but in this video, Barney doesn't dip a pen. Uh, he uses something else. Uh, so have a check out of this.
There you go. So uh, not using a pen, using vegetables. There you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> Just proof that people will watch anything on the internet these yeah, days. Yeah, really. yeah. <laughs> so the reason why I did that was because um, people get quite stuck up with having the right tools to start. Whether, right. whether that's with anything, you know, you know, whether having the right paint brushes for, you know, painting, um, what, you know, whether like, you know, you, you do guitar that some people think, oh, I must have a really brilliant guitar, otherwise it won't. I say, no, just get a banana. Just get a banana. No, <laughs> start with a banana. And a bit of string. <laughs> that's where we all started. Um, and as I was just saying that it doesn't matter what, what tools you use, it's just about the practice yeah yeah and that's, but that's and that's something that you'll see sort of running through my instagram feed where i might post a lot of my work um and so i said i, I showed it with a vegetable and pe- and the thing is on the internet like a vegetable on its own is not a, a weird thing <laughs> clearly on its own is not a weird thing but combining the two you know <laughs> it, it, people are like oh that's you yeah know. mind blown. and so people like comment after comment of just saying uh, tagging their friends in and going dot 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 with a carrot. Right, okay, nice, <laughs> the nice. First, the yeah. carrot is the first one. They want this. And then um, the one that went the most popular was the chilli pepper where I injected yeah. it with ink uh, and and wrote the word. And um, yeah, just, it, the people just thought, you know, it's just, you know, like people falling over. They, yeah, it's yeah. that sort of, it's, <laughs> it's not, because it's, the thing you is with me, it. It just I, happens. my personality comes across as in like, I can't concentrate on just doing serious stuff all the time. It has to be a bit of injection of fun, yeah, just to keep me from Losing just not going crazy. Yep. <laughs> and um, and so yeah, I did that. But what came from that was um, that it increased my follower count. Not that I was looking to do that, mm. but um, and in turn, I then got a I got interviewed by the BBC. Oh yeah, BBC Trending. You're on, yeah, isn't BBC it? Trending. Yeah, yeah. They did a. They said, "Could we come around and film?" Yeah, because uh, you know you've got quite a few followers. Thanks so, to that. So you've got it's, at the moment you've got two hundred forty three thousand followers on Instagram, yeah. fifty three thousand on YouTube, something like that. Yeah, which is almost I'm almost at fifty three thousand. Just a little, almost, just another <laughs> fifty two thousand nine hundred and so to go, and I'll be there. But you know, um, when I do that banana guitar video, yeah, yeah, I'll be, <laughs> you'll be you'll be way <laughs> straight past you, but um. And so obviously you get that recognition there, and you so you ended up working with particular companies as well, didn't you? So you've done some stuff with Adobe, um, and Apple. You did some sort of Krispy Kreme, wasn't it? Or or did Krispy Kreme just kind of buy one of your so, fonts and use it? So um, so the way I earn money through what I do is uh, at the moment I, I get a small portion of sponsored stuff just yeah. with the the size of the audience I have, uh, but a lot of it comes through I make my own fonts. Yep. So whether that's a hand-drawn one or whether I created completely on the computer digitally. Um, but one of the ones I made, um, and it's one of my most popular ones, uh, yeah, Krispy Kreme uh, bought it. I think we've got it Yeah. Up on so the this one is um, called Northern Soul, where it says nutty... Uh, uh, Chocolata. Chocolata. Available now. Yeah. And so, and I, um, so I was like really happy they used it because they bought it. You know, it's not. Did you know they bought it? Or did no, you no, no, no. I it? don't know who buys because I sell them on a, a variety of yeah. stores, um, and you know they're more than welcome to buy it and use it. Um, and so for me, that's great because that means I can say, "Hey, look, everyone, that's mine." A brand has used my font. You know, it's like sort of giving an example that they must like it. Yeah. Um, but I tweeted about it saying, "Look, <laughs> hey, look what Krispy Kreme have done." Not expecting anything, and then they got in contact and gave me a gift card, for free donuts for a year. A year's supply oh, of donuts. I say, so, yeah, yeah. Tell us about uh, how, how many is a year's supply of donuts? Uh, it's one donut every month. One donut. <laughs> <laughs> so when they say, you know, uh, yeah, I was, donuts, uh, free donuts for a year. What they mean is twelve donuts. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think yeah, they gave me like a, a, a six pack as well. <laughs> So yeah, a total of 18, 18 donuts. Wow. Out of 365. Four, you know, that must have been costly for them. I know. You know? <laughs> but they could, they didn't have to do that. So, no, that's true. That's so true. So it was, it was, so, it was know, good social media social marketing. Media. Yeah. like, I was like, oh, look what, oh, where they yeah. are. But oh. unfortunately, there is no Krispy Kreme like within a 30 mile radius. No, that's also so, true. Yeah. So I ended up having to give it to a friend anyway. It's a long way I, to go just to travel to Brighton to get a donut, isn't yeah. it really? Like, yeah, it's an expensive donut. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> costs more in fuel. Yeah. Um, and you worked with Speedo as well. Yeah, so you Speedo. Did some stuff with them. Yeah, I don't, unfortunately didn't get uh, a lifetime supply. Luckily Speedos. from my wife. She was, <laughs> she, yeah, she was. I wonder how many, if, if, if 18 donuts is a year's supply of donuts, I wonder how many Speedos is for a lifetime. Like, what's the going rate? One, if per, anyone... one per season? So just keep <laughs> yeah. going for. However many years. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone from Pretty. Speedo is watching this, let us know. Yeah. And we'll take your Speedos. Yeah. We'll have them. Like... Paul would like a Speak Life. <laughs> speak <Yeah>. Life. <laughs> speedo. <laughs> Designed. <laughs> Maybe you could I... do a design, Speak yeah. Life. <laughs> I don't know if, if your, your you know, viewer account might go down. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, actually, Speedo was one of the first brands I I got to work with. So I, I, didn't, I, I didn't intend for calligraphy to become anything in my business uh, as it progressed I thought oh maybe I can tag it on to some of the stuff I do um, but um, one of the designers from Speedo was following me on Instagram and they needed some custom lettering done they had some posters of like uh, people models in, in different scenarios like the uh, fitness uh, for Olympic for mm. uh, like just general you know beachwear and they wanted loads of words written round the people um, in different styles, and and uh, yeah, he got in contact with me, and I, I did that, and it was really, uh, it was great to, not that having doing brand stuff is like you know the pinnacle of success, but it was just nice to yeah yeah to work with a brand I knew about, um, um, and it and it felt like you know I was doing local stuff as a general designer, but as soon as I niche down into this one area of expertise it opened it up to a much bigger um, audience because um, the person that got me the job um, doing that custom lettering for Speedo they had a design department they just didn't have anyone that specialised in what I did Yeah. Okay. so uh, it definitely sort of boosted my business mm. and niching down I don't know if, I can't say that it's going to work with every no, no, of course. every um, um, talent or whatever you have um, but it seemed to work well from for, for my business which yeah. was a real blessing for that and then so we kind of got a sense of what you do and, and the scale it's on as well because obviously I mean there's a lot of followers and you're working with some big companies and you know and being in that kind of world a little bit hmm. how how are you able to witness to your faith through what you do um, so um, so going back to my Instagram I post regularly I post try and post uh, Monday to Friday Sometimes it doesn't work that way if I'm out all day and I just don't have the opportunity to do it. But the majority of the time it is Monday to Friday. Uh, that became my priority. Mm. But obviously I needed content to fill. You know, yeah. you have to. I have to design something. Got to do something, yeah. Me writing a word or uh, putting together like a quote or a Bible verse. And so uh, not everything is Bible related, um, but I try and make sure that... Um, even if it's a secular quote, it doesn't contradict my uh, my faith in any way. You know, it's, it either complements it or is in line. Um, I don't shy away from the fact that I'm, I'm a Christian and that I this is who I am. Um, and and you, some of your content, I mean, people can still hear us. I think while this is going on, I think when I talked about, to you about this, I said in some way your witness online is both overt and not particularly overt so yeah. it's overt I mean here you're you're doing a design where you're writing on a helmet and you're doing a helmet of salvation and you do lots of kind of bible verses and things like that yeah um, in a sense that's quite in people's faces because it's yeah. here's a here's a bit of scripture but in another sense you know you're not preaching to people no um, but obviously there is that kind of unashamedness if that's a word um yeah, so I, yeah, because I'm not ashamed to yeah to use scripture in what I do. Um, obviously, a bit of a pun in there as well because that's like a crash helmet. Yeah, it's nice, always, so always good. To see, a subtle one there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's actually a helmet. It is, yeah, <laughs> and it saved your life, hopefully. <laughs> um, uh, oh, okay, yeah, I've got another. Yeah, so um, up as well there. Are you, yeah, the post where I oh I you know use scripture. This is you know, love your enemies. I try to 
Um, I also try to make sure I prioritise the description goes with it rather than just placing a Bible verse because you can... The thing I learned, I, I did a course a couple of years ago where, where it talks about, you know, actually the context of where the Bible per Bible verse comes from is very important. Yeah. Because you can, can use some Bible verses as standalone stuff and justify a lot of different things, which is not very helpful for other people viewing it. So I always try and, if I'm using scripture that I, like, ref, you know, put a context of why I'm using that bit of scripture, maybe where it's from or the looking at around that passage or whatever it may be yeah um um but then i also try and give an example of why um i'm using it so the love that previous one was love love your enemies yeah uh i wrote about the um how's that how's that work in my life so for me for me because i do you know i i feel like you know part of my life is online Mm. is that when i get uh people like negative comments or hurtful comments how do i react to that yeah. you know obviously i'm a human i i have feelings and so if i get a hurtful comment it's is hard and all you want to do is red tell aa or you know put you know put get one up place. yeah yeah, yeah of place. course but i what i find helpful is if um you know the knowing that there's a reason behind that behavior there's and a- i'm just thinking here and this because we've got a, a bit up on the screen i'm just thinking those who might be listening later and can't see it i'll just read this comment you put with your kind of love your enemies verse i never find it easy to love my enemies if someone leaves a hurtful comment on my feed it plays on my mind and i try to think of some clever response to put them in their place but then i stop and think of what jesus said love your enemies and pray for those who persecute i either don't respond or leave a helpful not harmful comment back there's always a reason behind the behaviour, whether that person is hurting, lonely, jealous or afraid. I'm not in a position to make them feel worse. A small act of love can sometimes turn a person's day or even life around. Mm. So I can see how, that, you know, actually it, you're, you've got the scriptures there and stuff. and But you're also, kind of, like you say, it's not into a vacuum. No. You're not just throwing it out there and leaving it for people to do what they want with. You're actually giving some context. Yeah. So there is a witness there. And I mean, I know when we chatted about it the other day, you said, oh, I don't think anyone's ever become a Christian through just like oh, you know post. I can't dismiss that you well, know there might no, be one percent who saw like the John three sixteen at a football game. Well, well, that's yeah. the thing. So I mean, I I heard a story of a girl who bought a lollipop and and on the stick it said I don't know where these came from, but it, it was on the stick it said for God so loved the world that and then it was cut off, like <laughs> and she and she saw this and she said and she was just thought well that what. Yeah, she and wanted so to find out. She wanted to know, and she went and found out. Like, where does this first come from? And she went and found out, and you know, God so loved the world, He gave His only Son, um, and she became a Christian off the back of that. And so, I mean, yeah, if I someone can, could I, become a Christian off the back of half a Bible verse, <laughs> you know, who knows? I yeah, I suppose I've never met there. anyone who said I saw a, a Bible verse yeah. online and I became Christian. Yeah, I think for, for me in the way I see how things work in my life, you know, and this is how, uh, and definitely the way like me and my wife minister to others is through relationships. So and consistent relationships, mm. and that is the same online. It's if I'm consistent in what I do and the message I put out, that may be more helpful to someone else mm. viewing my content. And and this is where I think like. You know, because obviously most people who are watching this uh, or ever watch it are probably not going to be letterers or graphic mm. designers or, or in that vein. But actually, and, and many of us are never going to have a, a huge internet presence. But uh, but whether we we're online or at work, I think you know there's stuff we can learn mm. from. You know that you know I asked you a bit about. Um, you know what are the principles behind how you witness online, and I think some of it applies to us. Where it applies to all of us who are online, but it can apply in the workplace as well. So, I mean, you talk, you talk, you know, we've talked before a bit about having integrity in what you do, um, uh, and that that implies across, you know. So you you've mentioned that in how you respond to criticism and stuff, yeah. um, but that applies for all of us, you know, whether we're just on Facebook or Twitter or whether we're in the workplace. Yeah. Um, you know how we respond to or how we treat. Yeah. The people we're engaging with over a counter or whether it's through a lens or yeah. whatever and it, it's not just how we treat that person because it, you know if we treat that person badly it's other people viewing that yeah action as well and that affects other people around it i'm not i don't want to say i'm perfect online no no of course um, but it's 
but it's it's the phrase I heard I've heard a few times is that you know the world doesn't the world doesn't read the Bible the world reads Christians yeah and so like if people know you're a Christian whether you're you know posting whether you've got a two hundred forty three thousand or whatever Instagram following or whether you've got a few hundred friends on mm. Facebook people are looking at you and they are reading you as their text yeah. for what Christians are like and as a witness right, we're much more on display than we used to yeah um, you know because just our Facebook feed personal Facebook feed to other friends um, what the content we post uh, how we interact in the comments is a major thing because I see some stuff going on that you know um, it's not helpful how people react and stuff like that and yeah and and so it's just and it's on that day-to-day thing it's not big things it's day-to-day small little actions mm. that really and it, and it's how people you know it's all about the experience i suppose how they experience you is how they experience their you know how they think jesus must be yeah so if they have a bad experience with you they must think all oh, they love jesus so and they want to be like Jesus. Is that how he is? Yeah. And so, you know, I suppose, and when, you know, like you're saying, none of us are perfect, but it's 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 trying our hardest to to know that our actions have, you know, like using a sort of ripple analogy, that those small actions can rip out to such a big area. And I suppose yeah. for me, positively and negatively, I suppose. yeah. That's... And I suppose the bigger my audience is, the more I have to be aware. Or I, I have to be aware of that as a small audience or as a bigger audience because yeah. actually I'm, I have a lot more people viewing in mm. uh, and so that means there's a lot more people viewing my actions. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think that that, and that that applies, doesn't it, for all of us, like, you know, say, we're on, if we're using Facebook or something, mm. it it's just being, it's displaying that integrity of character we witness through what we do on Facebook or online mm. as well as in the workplace or at school or wherever it is. Um, but yeah like you say knowing that it can have such an effect yeah you know in some sense you have to be quite quite careful about it and yeah. thoughtful and I know there's you know lots of people you often hear people say oh well you know I, it's my my Facebook feed I can post what I like yeah. you know and of course in, in a sense yeah of course you can post what you like but it's you know not every you can post what you like not everything is helpful you no. know everything is permissible but, I, but... What I find and I know you find as well is, is that when you pe- meet like a person on Facebook mm. is completely different from what they're like in real life yeah in, in terms of sometimes or sometimes people are actually like um you know there's no they're exactly as they are in person right yeah, yeah but some people are like hide behind that you know the sort of social facade yeah. Of, you know they can do what they want but then when you actually speak to them in person they're like completely different yeah and I think you know my aim as a Christian I mean online whether it's with just people who are friends Mm -hmm. on Facebook or whether it's you know when we're doing like speak life stuff my hope would be that when I meet people you know if we go you know and I go to places and preach or whatever people would say wouldn't say oh he's so different compared to how he is yeah you're much different you know not you know, obviously there's that physical thing where you meet someone like, oh, well, they're taller than... Yeah, they yeah. Were on the, but you'd hope that they'd say, oh, yeah. you know, they're, they're, there's no... They're, what there's you're no... looking for is like, when they meet you, you're exactly the same as what they thought they were going to meet. Yeah. You know, from... from What you see is kind of what you... Yeah. I don't want to... I want my personality and my faith and my, you know, I don't want... You know, and that's why I find that I post a lot of stuff that's process. So... um you know, if I muck up or if I make an error, yeah. I, like, I was trying to draw on a hat like a few months ago, and um, like a baseball hat was just black hat, and it all went wrong. Like I went on that, and the ink just spilled over it. Yeah, it was supposed to say flow, and it said like blow. <laughs> <laughs> and but I posted it anyway, and and people were so thankful because you know when they see someone who's got some. Um, like flaws, flawed yeah, character. It, it, it enables them to connect, yeah. and it, it, just generally, not looking at the Christian spectrum, but just generally as a way, because you know, we build up audiences for a business, is being like honest and real. Mm. People connect with, you know, they don't connect with a faceless brand; they yeah. connect with something that resonates with them, um, and so, you know, I show things that don't go right I show 
um, the beginning, the middle, and the end, um, so that people can show that it's not just you know it's quite hard when someone just posts perfect stuff of perfect work, mm. an unattainable, and that's not just work though, is it? Cause no, it just. You know, you think of people who who take however many selfies to get the perfect selfie, and yeah. or they 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 don't post about all the terrible stuff that's happening. Yeah, you know, it's all about you know the, the almost the perfect life that people want to paint. Yeah, and I think as Christians, we're in danger sometimes of falling into that trap of, you know, how we use social media that we can just paint a picture that's yeah. not realistic. And I mean, there's I think there's a fine line for Christians in in how much you share and don't share in terms of, yeah. you know, because because nobody likes the oversharer on Facebook who like you know everything you know it's almost attention seeking kind of everything's yeah. so terrible at the moment but you know equally there's a place for being open and honest mm. um, it's hard to strike a balance isn't it um, and I, I think there's something that you know because we all like those before and after photos don't we oh, yeah, you know yeah. the sort of you know I know a lot of them photoshopped but uh, <laughs> but like I I don't want anyone to come to my feed and me to alienate them not just like um uh you're not good enough in terms of being a christian mm. or in the skills of learning calligraphy and stuff like that and i want to show them i had no experience when i started yeah you know and my handwriting is still poor um but i'd like to show regularly that this is what it was like at the beginning this is what it's like now I just put in the hard work and the practice yeah you can do that too i don't want people to come and just be oh this is an unobtainable you know, um, I, I I need them to, I want them to feel like, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. And and, and part of what I do is teaching. You know, YouTube is all about this teaching. Uh, I often do some of the posts where it's showing people how to do maybe a certain letter, you know, that they're struggling with. Um, I try, uh, obviously at this level, I get a lot more um, messages, but I try and respond to people, try and be helpful, uh, and you know help them out um and i get a lot of people who 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 have been helped you know they're a christian and they're a designer and seeing what i'm doing um has helped them as well or maybe inspired them uh, which is really helpful for me knowing that they've seen that because i i need i suppose sometimes i can feel like i'm just putting stuff out there into a empty box yeah um and so sometimes it's nice to get feedback and and e- even if it's like you know, I always appreciate feedback, whether it's good or bad, and whether you know, whether it's about you know how I'm, how I'm living, you know, I'm always appreciative of having that accountability yeah. with other people as well that can challenge me. You know, I try, I, I, I. There's certain things that I don't swear in any of my posts or letter any swear words. Um, I think you said as well nothing that you wouldn't do any writing that was just yeah. contradictory with anything you believed in yeah I don't want them to look at it and go well hang on a minute I thought he it doesn't was, add up there I thought he said he followed Jesus and, and yeah you know. so I, I try and make it as clear as possible um, some of my posts are just secular some of them are just you know uh, me talking a lot of it's to talk about practice because um, you know the, my Instagram feed is people who um either love viewing uh, lettering and click fee or they want to learn Doing from it. me um, so that is the sort of primary thing but and we're we're kind of running out of time a little bit and so we're not going to have a huge amount of time to talk about like thirsty yeah. I mean and, and kind of what it is I mean thirsty I mean it's very briefly you and I are on this team which is a cafe church kind of mm. Friday nights or every other Friday night very informal yeah um, thing but what I'd love to just chat about very briefly is um you're able to use those gifts that you've got to actually serve in the church yeah. as well. So, cause I think there's a lot of people who maybe kind of think I've got nothing to give, no way to serve. Yeah. And it would be, I suppose it would be easy to kind of look and think, well, I just, I just do letters. How on earth can I? Yeah. Cause like the graphic design stuff. Yeah. I could do the church newsletter or uh, flyers for it. Yeah. But it's like, well, oh, how, 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 but you have used it to kind of serve at thirsty. And yeah. I mean, I've got an example here actually. Yeah. On the screen. So, that was the thirsty flyer you did, yeah. you know, because we have a term card or a yearly kind of program card, mm. don't we, of all the dates, and you've kind of done that there um, for us. Um, and I mean, you you've done a lot of work for the church, yeah, and on that kind of front, haven't you? Yeah, and it's a real blessing to be able to um, do that sort of thing and be used in that in that way, mm. you know. Um, and I, th- 
I, you know, because I think um, church uh, can't help but be a brand in itself and need, you know, people are very visual, you yeah. know, why Instagram so popular because it's visual and from people like me, I just work in a lot more with images than I do with words in terms of, you know, reading rather than viewing images rather than reading words. Mm. And so it's, it's, you know, the how sometimes the church is displayed in terms of what it looks like in terms of branding and stuff like that. It's sometimes actually quite important because people, you know, and I think whether, whether we as Christians like the idea yeah, yeah, of like church it. being it's, a brand, I mean, that might kind of, we yeah. might hear that and go, oh, we don't like that. But in a sense, you to the world, there is church and church yeah. is this brand. And they, you know, I always say when people think of church in their head, they're probably immediately thinking kind of yeah. Vicar of Dibley, yeah, you know, pews, little stuffy, kind of quiet. So, yeah. Yeah. Most people, the only thing they see of church is going to be royal weddings, yeah. you know, that kind of cathedral-esque. Uh, you know, all dressed up in the robe. And a very alien and I mean, and I know actually we talked about how, you know, you did one of the designs for our posters and there was a guy who saw it and like literally with no other connection was it, I think, yeah. just saw this design and he was like, oh, that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll go to church. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm um, 39. That's the first time that's ever happened. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose that goes back to that 1% where... Yeah, yeah. You know, well, there you go. But it, it's... You know, that was really encouraging for me because it's like you feel like um, as a creative, you feel like, oh, how do I help the church? Because, you know, there's a list of things like teachers, evangelists, um, you know, the prayer ministry, stuff Calligraphers. like that. Calligraphers. <laughs> there is designers in the Old Testament. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, of the, course. Uh, um, the tents and stuff. And the scribes. The is scribes, that right? yeah. <laughs> Go on, they would have had a lot of work to do. Um, <laughs> And so it's nice to be able to be used in that way mm. and know that, you know, we've all been given different gifts. Um, but just because it's not listed somewhere doesn't mean you can't mm. be used. You know, where, you know, like people who do the flowers in church, there's, there's people in there that love flowers and it really helps them to maybe worship, to mm. connect with God, you know. Um, it just it's loads of different things that really help. You know, even down mm. to like... People who like coffee, yeah, you serve good coffee, and they feel like, and I think that's the thing, isn't it? So, so I think what I want to say to people out there who've got different gifts is that it might be the case that they look at their church and they go, "Well, there's nowhere for me," you know, mm. that what other church currently does is say, "Well, I can't serve yeah. here with this gift," and it may well be just taking your gift and saying, "I have this gift, and could I use it for something?" Yeah, you know, because. You know, I mean, I think like so for years and years at, at All Saints, we had our Bible, uh, our Bible verse for the year, hmm. kind of church verse for the year each year, and um, and it's only really in the last couple of years, isn't it? I think since you've been doing the some more work for us that you've you've actually done a nice design of the verse and stuff. And, yeah. Um, you know, whereas before it was just a kind of printed well, on a piece. I of I suppose cards. for me, I wanted to produce something that people would want to put on their fridge. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or. But, and and it's on big posters as well, isn't yeah, it? You know, so, so people... um, yeah, you know, and and that helps people to remember the verse and remembers, you know, because also there's stuff that goes around it, you know, when they when they when there is a verse of the year and stuff like that. So it helps them to remind it, and they might put it in a more prominent place, and then someone comes around and they ask questions about it. You just so yeah. um, so everyone. I think you know the the thing is that everyone has something they can use mm. for the you know was it the 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 spirit gives the gifts for the common good, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we, we kind of run out of time. Um, but Bon, it's been really good to chat to you. Um, You're I welcome. don't know if we've had any questions. I did see one question earlier actually on, uh, from Glenn. Um, I'll tell you what, actually. So, so Glenn has asked two questions. We'll, we'll so, so, but do you ever get called Fonsy? No, that's quite cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it says we know this from a theological point of view but from a visual point of view why is the cross such a compelling brand so from a theological <laughs> so we know yeah, yeah, so they're putting you on the spot there um, so we know theologically why the cross is you know people are so drawn to the cross yeah but is there do you, is there anything about is there something about the cross itself as a visual thing that well, from a design point of view is I, it? Know, I suppose it's recognised it's like you know you go into the world, Nike, 
Coca Cola McDonald's. Yep. Is universally. You know the M's. You, you know, know the, the ticks. You, you, you know, like even my children, young children, just like on a sign on a motorway, it's just the M's. Oh, yeah. McDonald's is there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Hmm. All right. And I think it's just certain things. I don't know visually why it, it, it works very well, but it, you know, certain things stand the test of time. The cross is something that does, you know, is instantly recognisable, um, maybe because it's so simple. Mm. Um, some a lot of the things that are the most simple are, work so so well as a visual reminder. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think it just because it means so much to so many people, it's become a an iconic. Um, it's it's a it's a brand logo in in many ways. I yeah, suppose, you know, it, it's it, a, to use a kind of worldly way of looking yeah, at it. Yeah, it's a worldly way because you know it's a reason why people use it. You know, have it round their neck in terms of like you know, in the, e- even if they're not religious. Even though there not are religious. lots of people who would use that image. Yeah, as well, and. Yeah, you know, without asking, you don't know why. Why do you wear a massive crucifix, even though you don't? You have nothing. Do you have no real connection to yeah. it? Yeah. So, and that comes from like you know, why do you wear a Nike T-shirt? You know, are you a Nike follower? And I suppose it is. But mm. then sometimes you aren't because you just like. Is it? Yeah. Wearing a massive brand. Why are you wearing could... the the Ramones T-shirt? Yeah. I don't even know who they are. That kind yeah, of, yeah. You know, so there's that element, but yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Maybe there's. And maybe there's scope to delve into why the cross is so visually compelling. Who knows? Um, we've kind of we have kind of run out of time, but Bon, thank for thanks You're for welcome. chatting. Thank you for sharing a bit about your life and what you do. And I think it's really encouraging for us to hear how you're being a witness in front of, you know, in fairness, you've probably got more followers there than some Christian leaders have got on Twitter, you know. So um, not to put any pressure on you there. No. Um, <laughs> Um, and but you know, there, there's a great witness there, and it's an example to us as Christians. All of us, whether on social media, being a witness through our integrity, but whether we're, but also in the workplace, hmm. how we react to, to criticism and comments and, and respond there. That it's about that that witness of integrity there. So thank you for sharing that with That's us. Right. Um, Actually, one leaving thing is that yeah, I'm uh, I'm like that weird mix of introvert and extrovert, more on the introvert side. So I'm not as confident as like you are in terms of just speaking to someone and you know, having a, like a sermon off the cuff or, you know. So <laughs> for me, this suits my personality more. And it yeah. might be some people actually living your, you know, doing your evangelism work online is is a more, comf- is an easier way of you you yeah. sharing your faith um, and, and, and helping others. Because, yeah, for me, it's, I find it hard to start a conversation in terms of that way. Uh, I'm happy if someone asks me, I don't know I could do it, but, you know, just going randomly in cold, speaking to someone is, yeah. is much harder. Harder. Um, so, yeah, if that's something that, you know, that I think there's like new avenues of ways of sharing the message that, mm. that, that technology and the internet are bringing to know that, you know, if you're not good in one area, you can be in another. Absolutely. Yeah, and I mean, maybe in some ways that's partly what, in some ways that's what we want to do at Speak Life as well that we've in the last year we've changed the focus much more to online stuff mm. and, 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 and yeah while we were talking and, you know with prepping we, is that if you look at how people interact nowadays they're all looking at their phone the attention is down is down on, the, down on the phone yeah. if we like it or not you've got to know. work with what you're given yes yeah absolutely <laughs> right, we, are, uh, we are going to have to knock it on the head there Bonds thank you so much for right. joining us um Thank you everyone for watching um, and um, do tune in again next week. I'm going to be speaking to, I think it's Dave next week. I'm kind of slightly unsure who, which two, one of two I'm getting. Uh, but I think next week is going to be Dave. Uh, I'm going to be chatting a bit at him, uh, him a bit about his faith, how he became a Christian and a bit about some kind of difficult times in his life, um, in his family. So do tune in for that. Um, until then, we hope you have a really good week. Um, uh, stay safe share our material um, and we'll uh, we'll see you again next week thanks very much bye